That was something outside. You should see what's going on. You got you have prime real estate. You have to see what's going on outside. You're right. What a crowd in Beaufort. And I gotta I gotta tell you, Mr. Trump, here in Beaufort, the people here, I mean, this is the home of Paris Island, the United States Marine Corps premier training facility. And it's the home of Marine Corps Air Station, Beaufort. And the people of Beaufort, they love the military and they love our veterans. And they understand that electing a commander in chief is what this election is all about. Right. What best prepares you to be commander in chief on day one and keep America safe? Well, I'll tell you, we have had such a great response from the military. But you know, our military has been very much depleted. And we haven't been building it back up the way it should be. And frankly, I've been, I've been talking about this with a lot of people. Uh, and I use the best example, the drug companies. They give to the candidates. And then we don't go out to competitive bidding with drugs. We're the largest purchaser of drugs in the world. And we don't go out to competitive bidding. The reason is you look at a guy like Woody Johnson from Johnson & Johnson. He's a nice guy, but he's in charge of the Jeb Bush campaign fundraising. So when that happens... And then let's say somebody gets in office, there's no way you're going to go out to competitive bid. Well, it's the same thing with the military. We have people and we have, you know, when you, when you look at competitiveness, we're not buying the right equipment. We're not buying anything. You look at what's taking place with our military. It's being depleted. We're going to make it the biggest, the strongest, the most powerful. We're going to build it up. We're not going to be messed around with anymore because believe me, folks, we are being messed around with. We are we're thin. I looked at uh, General Ordiano when he left. He was saying it's the most depleted since he can remember. And he was talking about a long period of time. So we have to build up our military and we have to take care of our vets. Our vets are being horribly mistreated. We have to take care of our vets. Mr. Trump, just, just really just a few minutes ago, President Obama at the Asian Leaders Summit in California at a press conference, he had something to say about you I want to read, and uh, I don't think uh, you're going to be on his Christmas card list this I year. I don't mind. <clears throat> I've already let me, let me read you what President it's Obama said. It's actually a said. great compliment. <laughs> let me read you what President Obama said and uh, get your response. I'm, I'm quoting President Obama. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president, and the reason is because I have a lot of faith in the American people. And I think they recognize that being president is a serious job. It's not hosting a talk show or a, re a reality show. It's not promotion. It's not marketing. It's hard. That's from President Obama. <laughs> um, he has done such a lousy job as president. You look at our budgets. You look at our spending, we can't beat ISIS. Obamacare is terrible, we're gonna terminate it, we're gonna absolutely terminate and replace it. I mean, you look at everything, our borders are like uh, Swiss cheese. Uh, this man has done such a bad job, he has set us back so far, and for him to say that actually is a great compliment, if you wanna know the truth. And we just got a call on it coming over. It was, the bridge is like packed, just so you understand. We were like in that car a long time. But we just gave one of the major networks called and they wanted a response. And I said, you're lucky I didn't run last time when Romney ran because you would have been a one-term president. That was my statement to him. And, you know, I was back in McCain when he ran. And, you know, frankly, that was going to be a tough one to win because a lot of things were going wrong, right? for, you know, for a Republican. To win that one was tough, in all fairness to John McCain. We should have won the Romney one because we had a failed president. We had a com country that was failing, and we should have won that one. So I backed Romney, I backed McCain, both lost. And this one, I said very simply, I said, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to do it right, we're going to win. We're not going to take this stuff anymore. We're going to do it right, and we're going to make America great again. You know, our whole theme is make America great again, and that's what the whole deal is. We're going to make America great again. You know, Mr. Trump, we've been fighting radical Islam for a long time. Uh, the Cobar Towers, uh, uh, the bombings of the U.S. Embassy in uh, Tanzania and in Kenya, 1990. In 1998, Osama bin Laden declared war on the United States. 
If Donald Trump had been president of the United States in 1998 instead of Bill Clinton, what would you have done? Well, first of all, I think the World Trade Center would be standing, I will tell you, because if you read my book, The America We Deserve, I have a whole, you know, paragraph or two about Osama bin Laden. And one of the big hosts of one of the shows said, I don't believe it. You know, Trump was talking about Osama bin Laden two years before the World Trade Center came down. Now, I wasn't even a politician. I was a business person like a lot of you people. And, but I've always been very interested and fascinated by it. And I saw this guy, and I watched this guy, and I read about him, and I said, he's trouble. He's big trouble. And believe me, I would have done something about it. The other thing is the terrorists that knocked down the building. If you look, the terrorists that knocked down those buildings were in Florida and different places, and they were all working on flying and working on different things. If that had happened with me, it wouldn't have happened with me. We would have had strong policies in place where they wouldn't have been here. They wouldn't have been in the country. Certainly many of them wouldn't have been, and we would have somehow found a way to stop it. As far as Clinton's concerned, he had a shot at Osama bin Laden, and I assume that's what your question yes. really refers yes. to. And he didn't take the shot. He had a shot at taking out, I don't know if you know this, but they were telling him, and for some reason, and he never explained it properly, he didn't take out Osama bin Laden. And had he done that, you would have had the World Trade Center standing. You wouldn't have lost, th lost thousands. I mean, I have friends to this day. They're, they're dying. They've been dying for years with the, with the problems of the World Trade Center and the coming down of the World Trade Center. So Clinton should have taken the shot. He, he had everything going. And for some reason, he decided not to. You'll have to ask him. Very sad. Mr. Trump, it's like we keep reading every day more and more scandals with the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, how does the Department of Veterans Affairs look under a Trump administration? And what do you do? What's the Trump plan to take care of the veterans? So nobody has been treated with less respect than our veterans. And I really mean that. These are our greatest people. The wounded warriors, the veterans, these are a great people. And I mean, their attitude is incredible. But you look at what's going on and you look at the suicide rate, which is record setting in the history of our country. And so much of it has to do with the scandal of the Veterans Administration. And it's corrupt. It's incompetent. It's everything that can be bad about anything. It's everything that can be bad about government. And President Obama hasn't done a damn thing. He's poured more money, but he has people running it that shouldn't be running anything. And we are going to make the Veterans Administration so good, so proper, which is going to be run so well. We've got some, I've got some of the best people in the world to run it already. They're talking to me about it. We need great managers, but I'll tell you what we need. When a veteran is waiting in a waiting room for six days, and can't get a doctor and ends up dying. You know, a lot of them, you talk about suicides, a lot of them wait for doctors and they die before they get to see a doctor for what could be a simple procedure, what could be a prescription, and this is what's happening. We are going to give them the right, and I cover this very strongly, very, very strongly in my, in my you know, we put in policy and it's, it's covered, I think it's very simple actually. But they are going to be able to go outside to private doctors, private hospitals, public hospitals, wherever they have to go, because different places have different, different ways of making you better. And we will pay for it, and it's going to be a really good system. It's going to be less expensive, and they're going to end up getting greater service. And we're going to make a determination, but it's something that's so simple. This is something that's so simple that I can't believe it hasn't been done. But they are going to get great service immediate on the spot. Folks, they're waiting four, five, and six days. Can you imagine yourselves put in that position? If I have to wait 12 minutes for a doctor, I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> These people are waiting. And you know, sometimes they get there and the doctor isn't there, the doctor leaves, or they go on vacation, they go home. We, we can't let it happen to our veterans. We have to take care of our veterans, and we're going to take care of them really well. General Douglas MacArthur once said, there is no substitute for victory. Our current president seems to favor containment. What is your view? Well, I think... You know, I'm always talking about MacArthur and Patton and the great generals are, you know, relatively modern day generals. Uh, these were great 
people, and we have people like that. When you go to the West Point, when you go to Annapolis or the Air Force Academy, we have these incredible young people. They're growing and growing and growing, and we have them all throughout our armed services. We have such talent that it's amazing, but we're not using our talent. And we're also not running it with the generals. We're running it through the White House. We're at a war, and we're, I mean, I've known many cases, and I'm hearing about them all the time, where we're ready to knock out the enemy, and they get a call, do not do it, do not do it, do, you know. Look, we're in a war where people are cutting off the heads of Christians and everybody else. This is like medieval times. We're dealing in medieval times. If you remember the date, the, the debate from just before the last one, where they were talking about torture, and they were talking about waterboarding, and they asked Ted Cruz, who I think is totally unfit to be president, but these are minor details. I really mean that. I think this guy, a senator just came out today, a senator from Oklahoma who is a very highly respected senator and said he's, he's a, one of the most dishonest people he's ever worked with. That's a hell of a statement. I've never even heard a statement like that. And a respected, one of the most respected senators. But if you look at all of the, you know, the different things that we have to do, we have to get back and we have to get back online and we have to do it right. We're not doing things right anymore. We're not winning anymore. We don't have our right people anymore. We have great, I love General Douglas MacArthur. He's always been somebody I've studied and I respect. General George Patton. We have to win. We have to beat ISIS. Again, it's like we're living in medieval times. We're living in medieval times. We never heard uh, James Foley. All of a sudden you heard a head chopped off. We haven't, I don't think anybody's ever heard of that before. Now all of a sudden it's routine. You see him dropping cages in the ocean and pulling back up a half an hour later, steel cages. We've got to do it. I was against, I should get points for vision because I was totally against the war in Iraq as you probably know, Van, but I was totally against the war in Iraq. I said it's going to destabilize the Middle East, and I totally destabilize it. And in 2003, 2004, they wrote about it. I would talk about it before that. But again, I was a, you know, I was a businessman. I wasn't a politician. But I just said it's going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, it did. It did. And points doesn't matter. You get points. But of all the people running, I was the one that didn't want to do it. And I felt strongly about it. Well, now that Middle East is destabilized, you have the migration. You look at Germany. You look at all of these countries. It's a disaster what's going on over there. And by the way, we should build a safe zone in Syria. And we cannot take any people in this country. We have no idea where they come from. We have... We have no idea where they come from. We can't vet them at all. And you look at the migration, you look at all the young men. I mean, you're looking, there's so many young, strong men. People talk about it. And very, I mean, relatively few women and few children. This could be the ultimate Trojan horse, so we can't do it. Safe zone and get the Gulf states to pay for it. And I would lead that. Who's better at building than I am? But we cannot let these people come into the United States. One of the things that has happened is... I have definitely been the focus on, if you talk about illegal immigration, when I, on June 16th, I talked about illegal immigration. We're going to build a wall, we're going to have strong borders, and that sort of morphed into this, because here's another element of it, which is probably even a stronger element of it. You saw what happened with the two radicals that got, they got radicalized. They're married, they killed 14 people, and these people gave them wedding parties and things, and they killed them. They walked in, they killed them. We cannot let this happen. We cannot let these people come in under any circumstances. It can't happen. We have to have a strong country again. We have to be vigilant. We have to be smart. And if we're not vigilant and if we're not smart, we're going to have troubles like you've never seen before. Just look at what's happening over in Europe. It is a disaster. You talk about the refugees, it brings to mind the governors. Are the governors doing enough? What more can they be doing? Well, I don't like what the governors are doing. The governor's saying we have no power. I know in South Carolina they're putting people into the state. And I like Nikki, and, and I, you know, I supported her. I've given her contributions, and I give everybody contributions, you know, to be honest with you. But I've given her contributions. And she talked about in her uh, speech a couple of weeks ago, she talked about anger and People that are with me, they are angry. And we're not angry people. We're angry at the stupidity of the way our countries run. We're angry that, you know, it's like... 
We have the highest taxes in the world. By the way, we have the highest taxes in the world. The middle class is being wiped out because they're paying so much. And for other reasons, they're being wiped out. I mean, the, the middle class, if you look at how unfairly they're treated in this country, but we have, think of it, we have the highest taxes in the world and we have nothing but problems. And then they say, Donald Trump is angry. I am angry. You know, I was supposed to